This episode brought to you by Stamps.com. Why go to the store to get stamps when you can have them printed right at home for your convenience? Also brought to you by DraftKings, the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic Guy, remember? So you don't have to. Why, is it December already? I better change. <laughs> did my heart keep beating? How did all my organs reconnect? Is my blood compartmentalized? Also remember when this was a thing? One of the earliest Disney direct-to-video sequels, the Aladdin sequels being the only thing before it, Beauty and the Beast The Enchanted Christmas was still kind of a weird idea. Nowadays, everything has a Christmas spinoff, but the idea of giving this obvious standalone story its own Christmas special, and to make things stranger, giving it a higher animation budget than the Aladdin sequels, was a tad odd. We knew the Aladdin sequels would be a downgrade because it was on video, but while this isn't quite the quality of its Best Picture nominee predecessor, it was kind of close. Again, compared to the previous films. I guess it paid off as it kept going out of print and several remastered versions were released after. And I think we all know the empire of video sequels that soon followed. But is this one of the few direct-to-DVD sequels that captures the spirit of the original? Or is it another in a long line of hour and a half dollar store babysitters? Well, let's take a closer look to find out. Let's start off Christmas on a high note? Well, I guess it would help to enjoy the movie better. This is Beauty and the Beast, The Enchanted Christmas. It opens at the Beast Castle where everybody is human and celebrating the holidays, including Chip. Let's see, what year did this come out? I'm just gonna guess and say he's voiced by Haley Joe on the mark. Kingdom Hearts fans were furious he did not play both parts in the games and angry at absolutely nothing else. I can't wait to be overcharged here! It is pretty cool that the original cast returns, as they try to give the flimsy excuse for why Mrs. Potts, played again by Angela Lansbury, has to tell the story about what happened literally only a year ago. That all of them witnessed. I did manage to save Christmas. Everyone knows it was mine! How many times are we going to have to go over this story? Why don't we agree that all our Christmases will be ruined when we go to CGI? They established this all took place shortly after the Beast saved Belle from the wolves. And presumably after he gave her the library. If not, we'll just assume he got that scar putting down the footrest. Today is December 24th, the day before Christmas. And uh, what a beautiful day it is. Belle, played again by Paige O'Hara, brings up that it's Christmas Eve, but the servants want to draw attention away from that and send her off ice skating. Merci, monsieur. Hey, it's France. Learn the language. English, with an accent if you're a candle. Huh? The Beast, played again by Robbie Benson, is already outside and not having the best luck skating. I fell and I landed on my... On, on the ice. The fact that a DVD sequel did not make a butt joke is a Christmas miracle all its own. This is a perfect day for skating. Like every Disney woman, my dress is impervious to cold. I hope they never invent leggings. Inside, we see the best character in the movie, an evil organ named Forte. He's the best character not because he's the villain, but because he's the villain played by Tim fucking Curry. Still trying to save every Christmas production he's ever in. <laughs> Five. I don't even know what that word means yet, and it's the sexiest thing I've ever heard! Fife is a piccolo, played by Paul Rubens, who absolutely loves Forte, and who can blame him? I'm not into men or organs, but I fucked the shit out of this thing. It's magnificent! Oh, come along. Oh, if you give me permission. Not only does this thing have an awesome design with a great voice actor, but his motivation is actually pretty interesting. Forte doesn't want to be human. He actually enjoys being an organ. 
He likes being more useful, giving in to the beast's depression, encouraging him to sit alone and listen to angsty music. You got him in his teen years, didn't you? But yeah, it is an interesting twist that someone would prefer this transformation rather than see it as a curse. And as such, he sees Belle as an immediate threat to breaking the curse. See to it that this blossoming love withers on the vine. How is your voice giving me chocolates in one ear and a blowjob in the other? I'll admit there's a huge missed opportunity here. Bell makes a snow angel, but Beast feels bad because he can't make one. And he literally has horns and a tail. You couldn't make his outline look like a snow devil. I don't know why I'd bother. Now he's worse than ever. He gave you the time period's equivalent of the internet. Aside from technically holding you against your will, you're really overreacting. Chip has never had a Christmas before, so Belle tries to explain it to him. Presents? Do I get one? Everyone gets a present on Christmas. Based on social, economical, and religious standings. Why don't you give the master a story? When Belle tries to think up what to get her kidnapper for Christmas. Yeah, okay, this does sound weirder the more I talk about it. Chip recommends writing him a story, because Laura knows there's not enough Beauty and the Beast fan fiction out there. Everyone needs someone. He must need someone too. Huh, guess Belle created the tablet. Though clearly this song had a low budget in the animation department, they utilized what they had cleverly, using the style of the illustrations to work in the stillness of the few frames they could use. It's not stellar, but for the few options I'm sure they had, I think it turned out okay. Find a better world. After putting the final page on backwards, she wraps up the story she wrote in a day. Those online king classes are really paying off and tries to convince everyone that having Christmas would be a great idea. But Cogsworth says the Beast would not approve. He doesn't wish to be reminded of his past, and Christmas is a most painful reminder of it. Must we forget that was the day he saw surviving Christmas? It's not fair! Don't whine, glasses. I don't know what's worse, that joke or the fact that children are perceivably getting liquored up in this scenario. I'll get some mistletoe. Uh huh. Didn't we just establish the wine glasses are like ten? We already gave one disturbing setup. We don't need two. We used to be at our very best at Christmas. Why? We used to prepare a feast for the entire castle. Hey, Mama, let's remember the story about how we remembered other stories. Seeing how half of us might have still had alcohol in our system, I think that makes sense to do. All right. Yes. Cogsworth eventually agrees, and Belle goes looking for decorations, discovering a tree topper named Angelique, played by Bernadette Peters. I thought we were to be locked away in this dusty attic forever. Ah, Angelique, mon amour. Mm -hmm. If you see a feather duster version of Fatal Attraction in the future, you'll know why. Angelique was the castle decorator and doesn't want to help them make their Christmas because she believes the beast will destroy it all. And seeing how it's Bernadette Peters voicing her, naturally, there's a song by Belle. As long as there's Christmas. Peters is like, I thought we had a deal when it comes to animation. You give me a song and I sacrifice being funny. It will stay up until July. As much as I love Belle in the original Beauty and the Beast, I will admit she's probably the most boring character in this. Yeah, she still sings great, but where the first one had a great range of emotions, this one's whole personality is just... content. And seeing how in the first film her whole motivation was not being content, this feels a little odd. Well, it's no peanuts waving their arms in front of a tree, but it'll do. Beast finds out about their plans and remembers that Christmas is the day the Enchantress came to the castle and cursed them. Bring me my presents! Please accept this humble gift. A storybook? You call this a present? Well, now we know what Don Jr.'s Christmas was like. While nothing can top the stained glass window flashback, there is something a little cool about seeing the Beast as a bratty human, as well as seeing the Enchantress. And I'm not gonna lie, when she cleans up, she can kinda get it. A curse upon your house and all within it. Now if you'll excuse me, I have to play backup for Halix. Beast approaches Belle, who seems to be looking for a Yule Log. It's a wonderful tradition. One log is chosen, and everyone in the house touches it. Oh, we have parties at the castle like that, too. <laughs> Except we didn't call it a Yule Log. We, we, maybe we did. To the film's credit, they do remind you of the setup of this romance. 
You have no idea what it's like to lose everything, to be trapped in your own castle, to be a prisoner. You know, this reminds me of a Christmas song. Tis the shut up! Hey, it's the stamps.com mascot you worked so hard on developing. Ready to enchant you with all sorts of amazing feats that you totally didn't forget about. Because the season of giving is finally here, and so is the holiday rush. If you're selling anything online, you don't have to face the holiday hustle alone. Stamps.com takes all the hassle and guesswork out of holiday shipping and saves you money. Easily compare prices and delivery dates across major carriers and get huge discounts. Up to 40% off USPS and 76% off UPS rates. Isn't that right, memorable mascot? Whether your sales come from Amazon, Etsy, Shopify, or eBay, Stamps.com streamlines your shipping and keeps you on your customer's nice list. For over 20 years, Stamps.com has helped over a million businesses save time and money on shipping. Stamps.com gives you exclusive discounts with USPS, UPS, and DHL. It integrates with all your sales channels across the top marketplaces and automatically imports shipping info for each order. Just print the label, stick it on, and schedule a pickup or drop-off. No need to rush around in holiday traffic. With Stamps.com built-in tracking tools and delivery notifications, you can avoid those dreaded where's my package messages from stressed out customers. And if you ever have a question, Stamps.com award-winning US-based shipping support team is ready to help. I love using Stamps.com because it's an efficient way to ship out a lot with very little stress. Deliver more smiles this holiday season with Stamps.com today. Sign up at Stamps.com slash Nostalgia for a special offer that includes a four-week free trial, free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. That's Stamps.com slash Nostalgia. Stamps.com. Easy e-commerce shipping for less. A lot less. Why hello, DraftKings mascot! NFL fans, the fantasy football season doesn't just start in September. Every week is a new shot to win big cash prizes at DraftKings the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. And this week, new customers can play free for millions with their first deposit. Don't sit on the sidelines, get in the game! Playing daily fantasy football is simple. Just pick your lineup of NFL stars while staying under the salary cap and score enough points to bring home cash. And with a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes, you'll feel the NFL action like never before. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings app now and use the promo code CRITIC to play free for millions. That's right, enter the promo code CRITIC to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. Do not miss out. Download DraftKings and play with the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Why, what a lovable mascot. What's your name again? You're fired. Use the promo code today. Now let's Chip know that the beast forbid Christmas, but she decides to have it anyway. Because that's always the best thing to do. Piss off your captor. Oh man, I should have saved that Charlie Brown Christmas reference for later. What about this one? Nah, too skinny. How about that one over there, shaped like a leg lamp? When the beast sees Belle got him a Christmas gift, his heart softens a little and he asks Forte to compose a piece of music for her. But when Belle finds her way into the music room, Forte takes this chance to try and manipulate her. Have you gifts? Yep. Spangles and fandangles, the trinkets, the trimmings, the trappings. Okay, which Christmas story are you trying to tell? He points out that they don't have a tree and the best one they can find would probably be in the Black Forest. Yeah, you know, because the wolves almost killing her wasn't enough to keep her out. She says it looks dangerous when Tim Curry says exactly what you would think Tim Curry would say. You are in more danger in this very room, I assure you. Side note, that face needs to become a meme. She decides to go and the servants eventually put together where she went. The Beast tells the servants to bring her to his room and instructs Forte to sing the song he composed for her. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa -la 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 -la. Mm, I like his other version better. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Ta -ta 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 Toxic love! 
Beast eventually puts together that the servants can't find her, and Forte uses this as an advantage to manipulate him further. If you must love someone, may I suggest you love yourself, just think it through. I don't really know what these Slimer babies are about, but again, they cleverly save on animation by using sketches as the glowing lines. And again, it doesn't look bad. Also give Curry credit, this sounds like a quickly written pain in the ass song to sing, but he nails it like the friggin' master he is. You go to pot, you'll turn to drink, you'll never rest, you'll end up mad and looking like some poor demented dove! There's only one other line more complicated in the movie. Is that a yellow-bellied double-breasted sapsucker? Rare this time of year. And to be fair, I think only the woman who sang Mrs. Lovett could say that. Beast destroys the decorations while Belle finds the Griswold family Christmas tree. The Jewish acts, though, make sure this is a more inclusive moment. Merry Christmas and a Happy Hanukkah! Hey, it's Enchanted Christmas instead of Enchanted Holiday. I mean, you guys got- alright, you can have this. Belle gets stuck in the ice, but the Beast shows up in time to save her. Only to imprison her. Again. You said you'd never leave. I just wanted to make you happy. Well, if you still think this is a story about Stockholm, this doesn't help. You won't rot in this dungeon. I should have known you'd never be anything but a beast. You're only a fool if you give up, girl. Jesus, how cool would it be if it went that direction? The servants sneak in to try and cheer her up. Merry Christmas. Doesn't look so special to me. Fuck you, you little hood ornament! All of this is your fault! Angelique says that their passion made her remember why Christmas was so great, and we finally get her song. And yeah, I'll admit, hearing Bernadette Peters and Paige O'Hara sing a duet is pretty fucking angelic. The greatest of the gifts we I mean, it's no curry Christmas carol. Tis the season. But still pretty good. Speaking of which, Forte encourages the Beast to destroy the Rose so they can all stay this way forever. Do it. Smash it. I didn't see Tim Curry record this, but you know he made that same gesture. Smash it! Beast finds Belle's storybook, though, and is deeply moved by it. He goes to let her out of the dungeon and... Each his own, my friend. Oh, you know uh, to get yes, we have another song. There's no doubt that as a team, we two are the very best. Technically, we could have used this time to extend the duet with two of the most beautiful voices you ever heard from your childhood. But I guess draft one of the dragon song from Quest for Camelot is fine too. Can you forgive me? For imprisoning me? No, for using the exact same footage from earlier. Hey, it's Disney direct to video. I'm surprised it happened only once in this. Let's give Belle the Christmas she's always wanted. Well, since we already had a totally unnecessary extra song, here's a totally unnecessary extra climax. <laughs> well, yes, you could cut this five minute action sequence of Forte's music splitting the castle. It's like that Aerosmith game where the music's the weapon. It does allow Tim Curry to be in the movie more and I'm always gonna be pro of that. Can you believe I never took a lesson? <laughs> And yes, there is something funny that the Beast goes to get revenge on Forte, rather than save Belle who figures out her own way to escape. I guess if she's not in peril in the woods, it doesn't count. He rips the keyboard out, stopping the music, and Forte tumbles over himself. Didn't even get a Pennywise joke. They clean up the place pretty nice, considering it was literally splitting in two. They put on their finest clothes, which is a little weird, thinking the Beauty and the Beast song isn't the first time they wore those. And they have their enchanted Christmas. I suppose if anyone saved Christmas, it was Bill. And if anyone came close to ruining Christmas, it's you, Chip. You're grounded just for me remembering that. Everybody in their human form celebrates the holiday. Belle is given a new dress, which I'm just gonna assume is the whole reason this film was made. Oh yeah, ka-ching! And Fife is now the official maestro. Would you do us the honor, old friend? I'd be delighted. Oh, come on, at least do one from the Christmas special. Here, take this symbol of my years of being tortured. Well, I guess that is a good sum up of being married. Yeah. yeah. was the best Disney Beauty and the Beast spinoff, not that that's saying much. I guess this movie is fine. 
I didn't dislike it, but I didn't really get into it either. I will admit it is much better than it has any right to be. I'll say too that for doing a sequel to one of the most cherished animated movies of all time, even just being okay is kind of an accomplishment. The animation for the most part is nice, the songs aren't that memorable, but they're pleasant enough I suppose. And mixing the original cast with this new cast of different characters does surprisingly go well. It's not a Christmas movie I watch every year, but I'd understand why other people would. Especially if they grew up with it. It's not great, but it's not bad either. Though I don't think Adequate Christmas would be a title that would sell as much. I stand by it as what it is, but I don't really see that as a bad thing. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember, so you don't have to. <laughs> Five. Hey, Doug Walker here doing the charity shout out and the charity, uh, charity this week was a recommendation, so thank you so much for that. It is uh, E Whiskers, and it's kind of what it sounds like here. Uh, this is a small, all volunteer run, no kill animal shelter in Albany, New York. Uh, their mission is to provide abandoned, abused, and stray animals with a place of comfort, safety, and health, and ultimately find them uh, loving, responsible, permanent homes. They specialize in helping animals that have no advocate, those that have been abandoned on the streets or have been abused. Secondly, they seek to reduce the population of unwanted companion animals by arranging for their spay, uh, spay or neutering prior to their adoption. And finally, they seek to provide information to the public on how to better provide for and enjoy their companion animals. Like, you know, obviously cats is called the whiskers. So uh, go ahead and check them out. This seems like a really, really good organization. You look at the site and then the Animals are so cute. I mean, like on the front page, just this kitten with these huge, gigantic eyes. You just ah, your heart will melt. So uh, see if you can donate to it. If not, please spread the word and always uh, show that there's so many good people doing so many good things uh, in the world. And check this organization out if you can. And I will just see you next time. Take care.